Okay, so I'm gonna get ready to do start working on the stab uh, sand in it for covering. So now it's time we're gonna finish the tip and the leading edge. So really in the tip, I start with the tip and I just kind of mark off the shape I'm gonna make. You know, this is sort of gonna be tangent here and it's gonna come back and sort of flat through here and then I'm just gonna take a little bit off here just to sort of give it a bit of round shape because I like that. Whatever shape you use doesn't really matter. So I'm gonna go ahead and sand that flat first and then start working on shaping it. Okay, so there's my shape. I'm pretty close to the line there where I kind of marked. And you can kind of tweak this as, as we go anyway. It's not super critical. It's just you got to have somewhere to start. So now I'm going to do a leading edge. Now really there's no magic to it. Uh, I'm going to do it in two parts. I'm basically using my block sander and I'm going to go top and flip it over, do bottom, top, bottom, top, bottom. Ultimately what I'm going for, and I'm going to keep checking and I'm going to go slow, is you know that this this leading edge is basically centered and I'm just doing it by eye. I don't, I don't put a line on it, I don't do anything magic just by eye and I just I try to evenly sand. So if I sand you know for 10-20 seconds on one side I sand for 10-20 on the other side and I get them really really close. You know so there I'm starting to work that one side down you'll notice you know down here I got a pretty nice line. This is this is why I use these long sanding blocks because it really helps and I'm working on this piece as well. Now the, tr the interesting part of these is they do kind of, you know, because there's a bit of a, f bit of a funny geometry as this airfoil transitions to the second bevel. Um, I'm not worried about this just yet. I'll worry about it afterwards. But So I'm slowly working to one side. I'm going to slowly now work the other side, and I'm going to get fairly close to a point on the leading edge. So we're getting both down. So at the root, you know, I still get a fairly good size flat spot. When you look down, it's, you know, it's fairly straight on both sides. Now if you notice kind of at the tip, I'm getting fairly sharp. So I'm going to try to get that point to near sharp, like right here it's pretty sharp. And then I'm really just going to round it. Sort of once I get that point and it's centered and I'm happy with the, the, the shape of the airfoil, at that point I'm really just going to use that bar and just kind of go around like this just to sort of round it out. Because it won't take much to knock these edges off and turn that into a round, a round airfoil shape. You see really we're like 95% of the way there. This really just needs a little bit more here and a little bit more there and then you round that off and you'll be bang on the money. So here we are, we're basically to the point I'm gonna round it now. So this, you can see this is pretty much, you know, a nice airfoil shape. It's pretty straight down there, fairly even. You know, and on the root side, you can see it's actually starting to almost round out on its own. Um, so I'm just going to kind of round this over now. And it's just by feel how I like that. And I'm probably going to tidy this joint up a little bit. And then really that's that's going to be our airflow. So really there's our airflow. So it's nicely rounded out there now. It's pretty much round all the way down. There's the joint. You know, I did a little bit of extra work right around here just to sort of make that look right. Um, and then right out to the tip. So there's our tip. So that's all I do for the airfoil. There's nothing, I don't really spend too much time. This is maybe, you know, five minutes or so of sanding. And once you do it a few times, you get used to it, you know, it goes pretty fast. Um, there's still, you can still feel a little bit of a joint here, which we'll take out when we start doing the rest of the sanding. So I'm gonna work on the tip now. Same sort of process, I'm gonna slowly kind of work it in either side and then round it off. So that's kind of the start of the tip. I sort of work from the middle because that's sort of the thickest spot. You'll see notice it's still flat here and it's still a bit flat there. And these parts are curved, so you kind of have to blend this in. So you're really just looking for that, that geometry as you're sanding, you know, that it's sort of, you're basically making the same sort of shapes on this side as this side. A bit hard to describe. You can kind of see the transition of the wood when you look at it in the right light. So you use those just to sort of help me make sure I'm sand enough. So now I'm going to work this forward and round this tip off and work this radius back and round this trailing edge up. So we're working the tip down a little bit more. You can kind of see, so it's still a little bit of a flat spot there, but it's, you know, we're slowly, slowly working it out. You know, and again, we're just going for that even geometry right around the, right around the tip. And on the back side, you know, I've kind of worked that radius out. And so you know, our back tip is kind of starting to round out. So I'm going to keep working on that. So there's our final tip. You know, sand it out there. You know, so like I say, you can kind of 
see there's you know it's pretty even geometry top and bottom and on the back side right and so for the last little bit of sanding I did just use you know just a piece of sandpaper and by hand um, I do find the the bars are great but they do leave the odd flat spot when you're getting into these really tight sort of really sort of blend these radiuses out um, you kind of need to do it you need to do it by hand I don't really like using the blocks you got to be careful you don't do too much by hand if they've laminated these blocks together um, where the glue joint is you can definitely get a, a bump there you'll sand the soft side on the other soft side and you'll have this line right so that's why I don't do a lot of sanding with just paper and I like the blocks um, but for just that final shaping it's fine to use use it by hand okay so I'm gonna tackle sand in the wing um, I've already done the shaping of the leading edge um, you can watch I showed it on the stabs but um, I've done them all the exact same. They're all fairly sharp leading edges on these wings and the stab and the tip I've done that too and I've put a little bit of filler on this just around this plate here you know in there. There are a couple of other small little dings I haven't filled them yet. Um, when I sand it down if they're still there I'll probably just use a a bit of water um, and let that let that sort of bring out the bring out the wood and then just touch it up. So for the filler, I've used this Elmer's um, Carpenter's wood filler. I, it's not the lightest stuff, but I, I find, I don't know, it just seems to sand real nice um, and goes on real easy. I, I don't know, I've tried a lot of that lightweight stuff, I don't really like it. Personally, um, for doing this though, I'm going to use um, these sanding blocks. You know, just some sandpaper, some good stuff. I got some 3M stuff here and some other decent quality stuff so what I would do is I you know if you got any real obvious kind of high spots I just use your block your Santa before and knock those down um, you know and that could be your 120 180 150 um, whatever I wouldn't do tons of sanding with it um, number one because we've already done a lot of sanding around here you know so we've taken a bunch of material off you know especially around leading edges um, so you can easily go through the wood it's not that thick um, and you want to use the block, you know, when you're trying to level these off. You don't want to try to do any of that stuff by hand. And then sort of once you got that done, um, and I leave the filler till after I do that. You know, I start out with a 220, and I just use a block like this and just hold it and go. And then I go to a 320 and a 400. Um, you want to gradually go through taking the scratches out. Now you could go to 600. I've I've done 600. I don't know that it really visually makes a lot of difference when you go go to do the covering certainly makes the, this wood feel super smooth um, 400 is probably sufficient so but if you want to try 600 you know go ahead definitely use the block especially over hard points you know on the stab um, because if you don't uh, if you got a hard point you know the balsa soft and this is hard if you're doing it by hand or with a with a foam block or something like that um, like these foamy blocks what will happen is is you'll actually sand the soft part and you won't sand the hard part and you'll end up with kind of a a dip around your hard parts right so you definitely need a hard a hard sanding block um, whether that's wood or hard rubber like these ones you can get it at the hardware store so I'm gonna go ahead and start here with the 220 and work through some of it and again we're always letting the weight of the block and the paper do most of the work you know, and that'll really quickly take that filler down. So I just keep working it. Now, I do it in the, make sure you're in the shucks, because if you're not, you know, when this aileron's moved, you can catch the edge. Be very careful crossing the edge of the aileron so you don't catch it with the block. You know, usually I kind of tackle those on their own and sand around the rest of it. So when I'm doing the leading edges, I don't really go around, I just kind of go up to where the joint is, just to make sure that joint's as smooth as possible. You know, really that's about all you need on each grit. Um, you just kind of do the same thing for both the 320 and the 400. Um, you're really just trying to make sure, you know, you can feel these transitions, right? So, you know, that it's nice and smooth and it's, and it's fairly even and you don't have any obvious, well, obvious bumps. You can always come back and touch it up a little bit um, if need be. So I'm going to go ahead and work through all the different grits, the 320 and the 400, and kind of show you what it looks like afterwards. 
So there's the bottom half of the panel done. Um, when you get the 400 done, you know it should start to feel very, very smooth, almost kind of satiny. You know, and all these, all these pieces, you know, these joints, they, they should, you know, you can always feel them a little bit, I find, but they should be very, 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 very minor. Um, so I don't know, maybe hard to see in the camera, but you kind of get this, you know, it's pretty smooth if I was to flip the wing over. And you look at that side, I think maybe you can kind of see the, see the difference. It's got a bit of a fuzzy feel still to it. Whereas this side, you know, that's completely gone, right? So this is basically ready for covering. Like I say, if you got any other little, little tiny imperfections that you've come across, you know, you can use a bit of water to lift them out. Um, or, you know, use a bit of filler and then just hit it again with the 400. Uh, I find that's, that works good enough, you know, and out of the tip, right, it should be, should be pretty smooth across that transition, right? And all your, all your joints like this should, you know, they should feel pretty good across here. So that's really it to do the top side and then basically this, uh, this wing panel is ready to cover. Okay, so I'm going to start doing some covering. So just a few things I'm covering. So, um, tools. So scissors, you know, I like utility knives with a lot of blades and I use that to do a lot of the cutting, um, just because cutting on wood dulls your blade out fast. An X-Acto knife with a lot of very sharp number 11 blades, not all number 11 blades are created equal. You can get some really crappy ones that their tips aren't very sharp and they're pretty dull. Um, but a lot of those, and I use those mainly to trim the covering and they dull like crazy fast. So, you know, you can go through 20, 30 blades in a covering job. So get a pack of a hundred. I got these ones on Amazon. I've, I've had some good luck ones on Amazon, some not so good luck. Um, if you're buying them on Amazon, I'd recommend buying North American made stuff. <clears throat> you know, rulers, that sort of thing. And then irons, I run, I got three, I got just a regular, my regular temperature one that I'm gonna use for most of the covering with a sock on it. A trimming one just to kind of get in the grooves, makes it a little bit easier. And I just set that to high all the time. And then I've got a very old school top flight one, which works really good. And I have this one set to high and I use that sealing edges you know, going around corners and tips, uh, just for stretching. So you can run one, you know, you could run one and turn the temp up and down. It just, it just adds a bit of time. Um, on the surface, what I'm going to do, you know, and I've, this is kind of prepped. It's not, I haven't dusted it off yet. Um, if you do want to hit it with one final sand before you do it, I actually did it with thousand grit. I just took a little thousand grit sponge that very lightly, kind of sand it off, just total satin smooth finish at this point. <clears throat> um, tack rag, I'll use that right before I start getting ready to put covering on because inevitably there's dust everywhere. I do have all my covering pre-cut for both sides, so I do this ahead of time. Now I haven't done a video yet on cutting. I've done all this on my vinyl cutter, um, so these are pretty accurately cut. So I'm going to do a video separately on how to do that on a silhouette. Uh, Vinyl cutter, the Cameo is what I have. A bit of a trick, um, you know, I'm just learning. This is kind of new for me. I'm just learning myself. In the past, I've done a lot of this by hand. Um, if you're doing cutting, covering up by hand, I recommend a sheet of glass to cut on. It'll make your knife blades last 10 times longer and you'll get a lot better cut out of them. So to start on the covering, really, I'm gonna do the inside edge of the hinge line, these, these inner tip facings. You know, around here and the same on the stab all at a white um, and then I'm going to hinge the surface up and glue the hinges in and then I'm going to do the whole color uh, on the outside surface and that way really I get the alignment together um, perfectly from the fixed portion to the movable portion um, you could do you know do it differently and do these parts separate, but then you, it does add a lot more cutting time and figuring out the overlaps and all that sort of stuff. So I find this is, is a bit easier. What it does not do is it does not allow you to get covering all the way down to the center line of the hinge. You get a bit of color down in here, but not much. Um, so if that bugs you, then maybe that's not the way to do it. But that's the way I, I like to do it, just from a, from a time perspective. So I'm going to go ahead here and start covering these up. 
Now I got this iron set to about 100 degrees. So also in front thermometer, so this is sitting at 95. You basically want it as low as Ultra Coat calls for for 100. Um, you kind of want it as low as you can get away with. I find. Um, just otherwise, you know, you can definitely get bubbles if it's if it's too hot. I'm going to overlap these just very slightly. And then really on the top because uh, you know when I cover the top I'm going to have a little bit of overlap. I'm just going to cut these off flush. So this is where your very sharp knives come in so I'm going to change my knife right away. You know and a real sharp knife will just glide through that covering like nothing. And then I'm just going to seal that edge down there. So, if you overlap this to the top, that's fine. However, let's say you overlap it by that much. So when you put your top covering on, you will see a bit of a, a sort of a, a ridge there from that covering coming over the top. So I like to overlap going down. Just that way, you know, from the top you don't really see that, see that covering. So there's our outer. Kept done, so I'm going to do, do this one now. Always, always, always cover on a towel or something. Don't do it on your bench because you will damage the the wood. You know, it's the wood is super delicate. Um, it doesn't take much. Also, why ultra coat over mono coat? I had that question before. And really, they're both good. I've used them both. Um, I do find ultra coat to be a little bit easier, I guess, to apply. Um, I guess the lower heat of it maybe, at least for me, I find it a bit bit more straightforward. Um, but either one's good, I've, I've used them both, so they do both work fine. Ultra Coat is a bit heavier, I think, you know, I've, I've weighed it in the past and on a pattern plane like this you're probably talking 15 grams of extra weight um, covering with Ultra Coat versus Mono Coat. Depends exactly on the colors you use. Some colors are heavier than others. Um, the finish on Ultra Coat is not as shiny. Mono Coat definitely gives you a, you know, a sharper, shinier finish for sure. You know, when you're doing this with the iron, you know, the trick is to kind of don't go too fast because it does take some time for that heat to transfer, you know, from the iron to the to the surface, right? So if you go too fast, um, you definitely won't always get a good good bond. I think, and don't press down, it's really just, you're really just letting the heat do the work and the, just the, the contact patch of the iron. You know, if you were to take this here, and you know, real quick we pick up our, you know, it's only 70 degrees and it's cooling rapidly, right? So, I mean, it it doesn't take long for that, that heat to dissipate, so, you know, definitely don't, don't just be over and I, oh, I'm done, right? That's not going to. That's not going to get you stuck down. So I just use my big iron just to make sure that's kind of on the edge there, sealed down nice. So this iron's running at 150 degrees Celsius, so it's it's kind of Ultraco recommends about 150 Celsius for shrinking and doing corners, rounded edges, things like that. So that's basically where I got it set to. It's essentially as hot as it gets, I think. But okay, so there's our elevator done. So now, before I do that other stuff, I'm gonna line up the hinges so I know where they where they gotta get cut. So one thing I do once those are cut, just to help me e more easily find them, I do take my real hot iron and I kind of just go over them, and the shrinkage of that just sort of. I don't know if you can see that, but it opens the slots up just a bit. So maybe you can, maybe you can kind of see that. It just, you know, those slots just get opened up just, just a hair, and then you can e easily see where they are. And also, it kind of prevents, you know, sometimes I find when you do those hinges, when you put them in there, you do get a bit of covering kind of built up, right? And it just doesn't, it doesn't look, I don't know, just doesn't seem like it looks good down the hinge line. 
I trimmed that back and I've just made a little slot in there just to allow that covering to kind of spread open a bit. When you get right down into the corner with it. So you notice it just kind of just on the very edge there, it just spreads open just a just a little bit in there. Some people might also ask, why would you cover and not paint? This covering seems like a lot of work, and it is. In fact, I, I would almost think covering is as much or more work, potentially, than painting, at least to get a good job of it. Um, so why would you do that? And I guess the answer I would give for myself, personally, and probably for quite a few others, is that I think covering is easier to get a very repeatable lightweight job with. I think I think you can paint pretty easily. I think there's lots of spray cans and whatnot that are available that that allow you to do a very good job without tons of equipment and space. And that's how I'll do the fuselage. But I think to do the wood structures, to glass them, to prepare them, to fill them, um, I think it's a lot if you know what you're doing, I think you can do a fantastic job with lots of painted airplanes out there that look, look great and are light. I think if you don't know what you're doing, I think you can very easily get too heavy or not have a great finish or whatever. Whereas I think with covering, even, even a pretty average covering job is still light and looks okay. So <clears throat> that's kind of why I stick to covering. I'd like to try my hand at painting one day, but not on, I don't want to start first on one of these planes and with both of those done, I'm going to splice the slots for the hinges in the stab half, same locations as this one. Okay, so we're basically ready to hinge now. So to do that, we need some pins, so we don't get our hinges jammed too far. So we're going to take these and we're just going to put them through kind of about in the middle. You know, these hinges have a slot right in the middle, so you have to do these kind of on the side. So, go ahead and stick these in. And hinge up your other side. Okay, once you get them in there satisfactory, pull your pins out. Close the gap up. And you really want to double check now that your tip gap is good. So put a little 16th inch shim in there. Just to make sure. Flect it up and down so you got lots of you get your proper throw and you're getting you're getting everything sealed up. You get max max deflection that you wanted from your bevel. And really just a thin CA now. So try not to get too much, I just deflect it open and just a couple of drops on each. Flip the other side over and do the same on this side. Okay, so we're getting ready to do um, some covering here. So I've got my vinyl cut pieces out, already kind of laid out there for the top. That's the right hand side of the stab. Now, I do have a template. And really you can print this off from your AutoCAD drawing and just print it in tiled. Uh, if you just print it to PDF first and then tile it. Now, here's the bit of the issue with the vinyl cutter that I've yet to exactly figure out. Um, I'll show you an example piece here. Basically, you know, some of these curves don't exactly work out when you move from AutoCAD to the vinyl software. Um, generally, they're pretty close. But, I'll give you 
one that's an exact match here. <clears throat> but you'll notice they just aren't quite exactly the same, and I think it's, it's most pronounced on the red, actually. If I was to go up here, and this red should be exactly matching, um, let's just move the stab out of the way, make it a lot easier to do this. So you'll notice you know the straight lines all match up and most of the curves pretty close when you get into these these here you see how it's it's that geometry's changed and that actually is the correct geometry that's in the cutter but for some reason when it transfers from AutoCAD uh, it changes it I you know I don't worry about it because it's pretty subtle um, but it is slightly different so when you're printing your template from AutoCAD uh, I can't you can't really trust that it's exactly right so what I'm gonna do is I'm really just going to use my template to kind of mark off because um, I'm going to do the yellow first. So sort of where a few of the key intersection points are um, between between the bits of covering. So all I'm going to do is I'm going to set this template up kind of where I want it and I really, you know, I really want it. I want this edge piece here, you know, these to be sharp right at the root. So I'm going to, I'm going to make sure that that's right on the root of the stab and then you know, I'm going to kind of put the trailing edge at the trailing edge just so these things are, you know, lined up at the back of the trailing edge. So if we want, you can even fold that a bit if you want. Just to sort of help guide your template. So there really is where it's going to sit there. And that's pretty close. <clears throat> so I'm just going to use a pin now to intersect because, you know, this is my red to yellow, my yellow to blue. This is going to be where my yellow is going to intersect the trailing edge here. You know, and this is, that's essentially my midpoint and on the leading edge up here. And it's really just to help sort of guide me where these are going to be. Okay. Otherwise, you can get kind of lost where everything is. <clears throat> so we can go back and just sort of highlight these points with a bit of a black marker just to make them real obvious. You know, I want to be real subtle with this so that nothing shows through. So there's kind of our our points. So now I'm really just going to line up the yellow pieces with that, or very as close as I can get them, anyways. And again, tack rag things down before you start your covering. So I've kind of tacked a bit of this down. So if you remember, um, you know the yellow since the yellow's on first, I've got it overlapped. So I overlap these a little bit um, and out here, kind of roughly that two millimeters here and here, because that's where the red is going to go and the white's going to overlap this, and then the white's actually going to be inside, the blue's going to sit outside. So, you know, we still have these marks. We can, there's one there. Um, so the mark's going to be right there. So we can use those marks afterwards to kind of guide the next colors. <clears throat> but for now, I'm just going to finish finish pushing this down on here. It's basically where I want it. Make sure your elevator half is neutral there. Now we can put these other marks in here. So I've left a 0.1 inch overlap around that piece so let's now we'll do the inside one again tack cloth i pretty much always tack cloth basically every single time so our yellow is going to go in between these two and center it up on that point and again it's you know i've left a bit of a flat spot up at the top it's going to sit kind of over like that and then come down 
and go through the middle of these two. So again, just position that up and tack it down. Okay, so there's our yellow pieces down. Now, I'm going to do the white next. Now the white's a bit of a trick, because there isn't a lot to line it up with. Um, we just kind of have to sort of follow the guidance of these two spots here. You know, and basically trust that it's it's going to be in the right spot at the end of the day. So I've tacked my white in place really. I've lined up one corner on the yellow for the overlap. Uh, these two points match up. Uh, the intersect here in the root. And so just double check to make sure that you know your other covering lines up. That should overlap a bit. That should come down that you do have an overlap on it, which I do. You can feel it there. So that's good there. You know, you can double check some of your other pieces here. This blue should overlap everything and just sort of line right up to the to the sharp point there, which it does. You know, so that just make sure that everything kind of works out before you fully, you know, adhere the white down. And some of these pieces, you know, they're flexible enough. You can definitely adjust them a little bit. They're not they're not too hard to adjust. So, <clears throat> so once you're happy with that, go ahead and seal that up. You know, keep watching that tack cloth. Now I did make a little bit of a boo-boo on my, on my cutter. I didn't quite get enough to the root here. I think that was a drawing error. Um, but that's okay, I'm gonna cover this up with foam anyway. So it, as long as I get a little bit of overlap, it's gonna be just, just fine. So go ahead and finish sealing this one up. Okay, once you get that uh, white on there, I'm gonna go ahead and land this inside red piece now. And really, just to get everything, the geometry on it, I'm gonna line up the trailing edges at the same distance. And then this really just gonna come and intersect this point. Very, very much right at the root. These all kind of intersect at the root. There's not a lot of overlap there. So I'm gonna go ahead and fire this down. I'll get that down. I'm gonna do the blue now just to finish off this inner piece here. Same thing, I'm gonna line up the trailing edge here just so they're all about even. And really for the blue, I'm just gonna go and get this to the very sharp point here. You know, these really narrow pieces, they're pretty flexible, so. <clears throat> you know, when that folds down, it's gonna look like it comes to a sharp point there. Okay, so when I got that done, <clears throat> do the outer blue one here now. And last but not least, we'll finish off the leading edge red. Definitely want to make sure that that is overlapping enough there at the very front. Yeah, I just kind of start and move down. Okay, I'm just going to start cleaning up. Um, that's basically the top. I'm just going to start cleaning up some of the edges and whatnot. Okay, I'm just going to start with the root. First thing I'm going to do is I'm just going to cut cover the hinge line is and then I'm going to trim this back just with some scissors yeah I'm just going to leave a random bit there nothing too accurate and I've cut the leading edge as well um, and then I'm just going to use my trim tool just to sort of bend that over okay that's what that looks like there now I'm going to do this piece here so I'm gonna leave, um, I'm gonna leave this all white in the root. So I'm actually just gonna trim this off to there and then I'm gonna take the whole back, I'm gonna leave all the back colored, like the top, but I'm gonna leave this part white, just to be, just to be a little bit different. So I'm just gonna trim that off. So I trim that off, uh, I've left a little bit extra there so that when I cover this over, I can trim that nicely right to that edge. So I'm just gonna go ahead and roll this over all the way down. Um, I'm going to do a tip next. Roll this over all the way down with the iron. Okay, so there is that. I just trimmed it off and then I used my real hot iron to uh, to finish up that edge there. So that's what it looks like. Now I'm going to do this back corner here. Now really all I'm going to do there is I'm just going to kind of really trim that around 
with my sharp knife, just like that. And then I'm going to roll these over, kind of from the working from the back towards the front. And I don't want to go too. I don't really want to go too far past because I'm going to have to. If I go, if you go too far past, you know, want to trim that off, right? So you're going to have covering stuck down where you really don't want it stuck down. Now for this guy, I'm going to get the hot iron. You got to be careful with the hot iron right on the right on the seam because it'll stretch it. And really, this we're just going to heat up and kind of pull it over the other corner here. Anyway, we got a little bit of a, not wrinkle, but wavy parts, you know, you just put a little heat to her and they'll disappear pretty quick. So there's, there's basically going around the tip. And then I'm going to continue with the leading edge here. Just a little bit past so we get on the nice straight part. So that's that, I'm going to trim now from there back, right? So to do that, I'm just going to use a, a ruler. Now once I hit, that white basically ends right there. So that's where I'm going to trim it to, is just to that. So it'll line up. Because it's red underneath there, right? This helps with a very sharp knife. Don't go too deep. Just You're just trying to cut through the covering. So just real... You know, if your knife is sharp, it'll... Uh, It'll cut right through that. Okay, once you get past trimming that, because this is all red, right, we don't need to be super exact as long as it's overlapped. I am literally just going to kind of use the curve of the leading edge as a guide just to go all the way down here. Okay, so there's that cut. I'm going to seal that up with the hot iron again. Okay, so that's done there. Now we just need to cut the tip. Now remember, this is all red underneath here, so we really need to be super accurate about here. So. I've just made two kind of center lines on there. So again, I'm going to use my ruler and just kind of guide my my knife between those two points. There. And then the rest of this I'm just going to do by hand because it doesn't really matter. So I'm going to clean that up with my little trim tool. And this back, I'm just going to trim it right off. There. So there's our tip. So we're basically done all the perimeter. Now to do the elevator. So the first thing I do in the elevator is I want to separate this off. So I'm just going to literally go through here and separate that out. And then these, I, you want to kind of get them wedged in here, this hinge line. You know, and I'm going to fold this hinge line up. And I'm just going to use my knife. And I'm going to kind of pinch the knife in the hinge line just to, to center it. And then I'm just going to slice all the way down. And that's it. So I'm just going to use my trim tool to seal all this up in here. You, have, you kind of already have to you know, iron this edge down first and then roll it over. Okay, we've finished up the hinge line there, so folded it over. I just trimmed the edges off even with the top so they're kind of white in there on both the inside and outside. And then the inside there is white, right? And then I'm going to put foam on, on this gap piece. So that's basically the top of our our stab and that's the, the bottom from from before so that's all wrapped up now what does that weigh so the stab is 93 grams to start with so it's 111 now you know so we've added yeah almost 20 grams a little bit shy 20 or uh, 18 grams I guess of covering yeah so that's it uh, for the stab Okay, so we're getting ready to work on the second wing panel bottom. So I have the first one already done. And so when you have one done, you want to match. You want to make sure the two sides match up really nice and close. So really, I'm just going to transfer these points over. 
um, you know, where these intersection marks. And that's what I'm going to use to line up my template to the bottom. I'm just going to make a few little marks on here. You know, line up where these colors, where these colors come across. So that way, when you put your template on, you can at least get, you know, you sort of have these points of reference to fix where these, where your colors uh, cross the trailing edge, and then do the same thing on the leading edge. I only have the one, the one color on the leading edge, and then this way you'll make sure that um, when you, you know, when you finish up the covering, that it exactly matches from one side to the other. So that way it looks, you know, it looks exactly the same. And less so important on the bottom, but on the top, you know, when you have it crossing certain points on the ailerons and whatnot, it just, it, it looks the same on both sides. So, so that's how I do that when I move from one, one panel to the other to make sure that they're, they're identical. Okay, so my template lined up, you know, I've lined up the, the marks I made um, on the wing to the, to the trailing edge and the leading edge. Now this template flipped upside down because um, it's a it's for the right hand side but you can I don't know you can see it in the video but when it's on top you can see the lines so all I'm going to do is use a pen again and poke you know at all the intersection points of all the different um, colors and then I'm going to go mark them just kind of highlight them up with a bit of black marker and on these really long curves like the leading edge you know I kind of mark just a couple of points down there just to help me help me line it up and you can always mark off the, if you got any, you know, perimeter edges or whatnot, you can mark them off with pencil. So, I'm just going to go back and I'm going to highlight some of these just with my black little marker here. So I'm going to give this another wipe with my tack cloth. Okay, so I'm going to do my first piece of, I'm going to put the white down first because I overlapped the yellow on top of the white. So I'm going to do the middle white one. I'm not, remember from the cutting video, you know, I've segmented these out. So this middle white piece is going to sit um, something like this. These ones are a bit tricky just because of the, the fact that they're all split. So it's going to sit probably something like so. So now again, you know, we've made our marks here, so, but these are the exact color points. So we know the whites overlap, so I'm going to draw a little pencil line about two millimeters out. I mean, you can measure it if you really want. And then this was, this mark that I made here is, it's the intersection point. So that, that's actually going to overlap kind of at an angle, you know, up about two millimeters over, you know, as it's kind of coming. So I'm just going to kind of very faintly mark where those are going to go <clears throat> and always I'm going to use my tack cloth to start to clean up the wood right where I'm going to put down that covering and I always make sure I clean the adhesive side a bit too just blow on it and just make sure there's no, no real big chunks sticking on it anywhere so I kind of got the piece in place there now so you know you really got to kind of take your time and make sure that um, you know, it's making sense all your overlaps when you do this. Because it's sort of, this first piece is going to set the stage, I guess, for, for everything else, right? So you got to kind of look at all your pin marks and relate it back to your, to your template. Um, just to make sure that, yep, that kind of, that looks right. So I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to spend a bit of time here lining this up. And then I'm just going to tack it in place with the iron in a couple of spots. Okay, so there's my first piece down, so I, as I said, I very lightly tacked it. I'm just going to tack through the middle, just sort of set up a spine, I guess, through the part. Just not, not, just sort of on the edge of the, edge of the iron. <clears throat> I'm not trying to stick it all down. I want to get the other pieces lined up too, and then I want to trial fit some of these middle ones just to make sure that uh, everything's going to work out, right? If you iron this all down and then it, something doesn't fit, you know, you really kind of, you gotta peel it up, but it sort of wastes the adhesive. So, so I'm gonna go line up uh, a couple of more pieces and tack them down as well. So I've got the the bigger piece and the root done. So I've overlapped these, you know, just slightly, and that's how I did it in the in the drawing, right? And so this one will be the same when I get that piece on, you know. And then there's my marks underneath, and you know, it's sort of. So I got a bit of the overlap there, same there, same there, right? 
it doesn't have to be ex like exactly perfect there is a couple millimeters allowance in those parts so I mean if you're just barely overlapped and that's where it lines up I guess it's fine you know um, so again still just tack down and move on to the next piece you'll notice there's this isn't covering that's a that's a complete mistake of mine on my drawing um, I didn't account for enough space in the root here so fortunately it's on the bottom and it's all white so it's very simple to fix just a straight strip and that'll be that'll be done and I fix that drawing for the top so even if you make a mistake it's not always the end of the world so I'm gonna go put this last little piece on and then we can start working on the colors so once we get our three pieces on there or all your pieces on your you can you know check some of your other colors just to make sure that yep everything's gonna work fine and now you gotta remember these are still curled over they're not ironed on but you know you want to just double check the fit that yes all the other pieces that you have cut line up you know and you're gonna get the right overlap and and that's all gonna work out and then you know if it doesn't you can always reposition the white um, but if you're happy with it then go ahead and we're just gonna finish ironing this down so if ironing this down I'm just gonna start kind of in the middle and work my way outside I'm gonna start this piece and I'm gonna use just a paper towel just come in behind and just sort of press the covering down as I, as I heat it up right I'm not trying to push down the iron I'm just heating it up with the iron and I'm just gonna push it down with the, with the paper towel if you got something else a cloth or whatever it's just just something so you're not burning your hand and you got to give it time to let that heat transfer into the into the covering. You know, if you do get a little bit of wrinkle, um, you can always do your, one of your hotter irons to just sort of very lightly uh, heat it up more than your your basic sticking down iron, um, and that'll that'll pretty quickly take out any wrinkles. If you're finding that you're sort of building a bit of a, a wrinkle like this, right, um, you can always peel up a bit. And, you know, just allow it to float. You gotta remember we are moving from a flat piece of covering to a nice round surface, so it's not always gonna exactly, you know, fall, right? And I'm just gonna move on to the next one. And I'm gonna keep doing the same thing until I get all the way through them. Okay, so I finished ironing all that out. Um, I did fold these over on the trailing edge and just cut them off flush, uh, just so they're not flopping around. Sometimes I do it, sometimes I don't. It doesn't really matter whether you do it at the end or or now. Um, I do have some tape on here just to hold the aileron in place. I'm going to take that off now because I'm going to put the the red on and the coverings holding it in place. Um, I just did that to keep it straight while I was getting the covering set. And you'll notice everything worked out. All the overlaps you know are ba pretty much how we drew them in the CAD file. And I've marked on on the red sort of the overlap where I'm going to line that up. Uh, this will be the yellow. I'm not going to mark the yellow because if you do and you get some black underneath it, um, you won't be able to see it. Maybe if you want to use yellow marker, if you got that, it might work. Uh, and then there'll be the blue out here that I'll do after I get the other ones done. So I'm going to start with the red, I'm going to line it up, and I'm basically going to do the same thing. I'm just going to iron on, working from inside to outside with my paper towel. So just at this point, tack, tack it in just to make sure that that overlap kind of looks right before you really seal it down. And so there's the red down, and you can see, it's pretty hard to see, there's the overlap. Pretty even, all the way around there. You know, and that's the nice part of that, the vinyl uh, cutter, or doing these, doing these with the vinyl cutter, is that the, the precision of the parts is very good, right? So you, you really have no, no extra covering on the wing that you don't need, right? Covering's fairly heavy, so it's about 20 grams of covering per you know top and bottom so it uh, it's like 40 grams of covering on each wing panel <clears throat> so it's not light so you don't you don't want to like cover it all white and then and then do it that way so it's worth the extra effort to to cover it this way I'm gonna go ahead and finish up the other two pieces and then trim it up and then we'll work on the red on the front okay so we got all our color pieces down now and all the overlaps and I can see the yellow you know in the blue I guess everything fit pretty good, so I've cleaned up the back end now, rolled all these over, trimmed them off flush, and the same for the tip. And all the tip I did is, you know, I just, just eyeball cut it down there and just trimmed up the end and rolled it over. 
Then I'm going to separate the aileron out. So I'm going to do them as slice through here and here. And then I'm going to crease this middle piece. So I've got these both sliced through so the aileron is free to move. So I'm going to, I'm going to use my heat of my iron and I'm just going to warm this up and I'm going to press this kind of into the groove a little bit. And that's all I'm going to do is I'm going to fold this up and I'm going to use the, that sort of pinch my knife in the middle. And then I'm just going to run all the way down the hinge line. So you end up with a pretty good separated change that. So I'm just going to take this and roll this over with my trim seal tool to clean that up. Now we've got that iron in there. You still have these leftover pieces. So you can do two things. You could you could just roll this over right and have a little bit of a lip there. I'm going to trim mine off flush. If you do trim it off flush you need an extremely sharp knife, brand new blade because they are so thin. So they're a bit difficult to cut. So however you want to do it, if you just want to roll it over and iron that down or trim it off, up to you. Um, and anyways, do that for both. Okay, so we get those trimmed up. That's basically, basically what it looks like all trimmed up. So we get that both, both sides done. So now we're going to trim out the aileron piece, or aileron servo hole, and then we'll do the red last. So for doing the servo, I just basically trim a little box out and slice the corners and roll it in. You can't really see it once the servo is installed and to help see it I just put a flashlight on it like that and then you can kind of more easily see the hole. So again a really sharp knife and I just I basically just eyeball it. And I just cut my, cut my four slices. Just like that. And then really I just slice them back into the corners. Once you have those done, you just use your trim seal tool and fold it over each side. Okay, so there's our servo hole just trimmed up and ironed in there. So that's it. Like I say, I don't get too picky about being neat just because once your servo's in there, you can't see it anyways. Okay, so put our red on. I've made a couple of alignment marks just on the, on the white just to help line it up. These long curves, you know, they not the easiest to line up um, but basically just line them up and tack tack your covering down in a couple spots make sure you're happy with it there. so we kind of tack it down you know it fits fine it'll, it'll work like that and then really we're just going to do the same process we're going to kind of iron it from the middle out to the edges you know if you got to lift it up and sort of position it you definitely have a lot of flexibility in these long pieces so Okay, so we got a red piece on there now. The leading edge and the tip are still loose, but everywhere else is, you know, all this part's done. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to roll this tip over. So this part's pretty easy at the back here, but this front part you can see it's it would be fairly wrinkly. So I really just use a hot iron and I just pull it over. So this part I'm going to do just my regular iron, just because I don't want it. If you do the where the color overlaps. Um, you know, the, the the covering will shrink and you want to end up with a nice straight line. So that I don't really touch with the hot iron there. I'll just do that with my regular iron just to stick it down. And then <clears throat> I'm just using my hot iron. And I'm just going to kind of pull that covering around the corner. And just heat it up. And the, 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 the covering will just sort of stretch around that corner as you do it. Basically go all the way around. And you can pretty much get almost to the top of the wing doing it this way. When you're doing it, you'll actually feel it stretch a bit, so it's pretty pretty easy to kind of tell that it's working. You know, because the top of this covering scheme, this is red or red on the top, I'm not gonna go too terribly far. I'm basically just gonna go past the middle here and uh, and call it done. That's all I'm gonna do. So it ends up with a pretty much a nice smooth tip there. No wrinkles. So really you can just trim that off with a knife by hand, but I'm going to finish up the leading edge first. I'm going to stick that down and I'm going to trim it all in one shot. Okay, so pretty much rolled that covering over. So to trim it, all I do is I basically just 
with my knife and I just I kind of just use the angle of the leading edge just to sort of set that line and I just trace it down. So because I'm gonna come back and you know roll the top over I'm not too picky about exactly if this line's in the center or not at this point. And I do that all the way down and then the tip I just do by hand. So we got our leading edge and our tip trimmed up. Uh, all the way along here is trimmed up. I did finish up this root part as well and I just rolled it over and so I'm not too worried about how this is because I'm going to put foam, that uh, Japanese foam in there. So really we're going to gap seal this and then that's it for our wings. Okay so we got our part covered um, and what I do before I get to doing too many other things is I'm going to gap seal the aileron. So you know, this is pretty important I find to do on the aileron and elevator. I've done it on the rudder, haven't noticed it to be that that is that is as critical on the rudder, but the ailerons and elevators for sure. So to do the gap sealing um, is super simple. I just use ultra coat. So I went ahead and pre-cut a piece, but all I've really done is I've sort of measured, you know, really what what the depth of this gap is, right? And just the the minimum. So it's usually out on the tip. So in this case, you know, there's about five millimeters kind of on each side of, you know, on the wing and on the aileron side. So I've made a piece that's 10 millimeters wide. So there's my piece and, you know, about the length of the, of the, uh, of the hinge line. Now it's not exactly the same length. I've cut it from one of the, one of the leftover pieces of, uh, of covering from the cutter. So as you know, they were 24 or 23 inches wide, so this aileron is just slightly longer. Um, I don't think it really matters if it's, you know, a little bit short on each end. So to gap seal it, all I'm going to do is I'm going to peel away the backing paper. Get rid of that. And then I'm really just going to fold it in half and make sure you're folding it with the adhesive side out or it's not going to work very well. I fold it in half, you know, kind of carefully get started and then I really use the edge of my my bench just to, uh, just as a bit of a sharp corner to kind of finish that finish that edge off. And I just, I make sure it's aligned and I just kind of go the whole length of the piece of covering. So when you're done, you'll have a nice, you know, sharp V shape like this, right? So all you really need to do then, you know, there's a little bit of a trick to this, is basically slide it down into the bottom of the hinge line. And I find using, you know, using a ruler or something just to sort of help push it down there. Keep it down there. You basically want it as far as you can get it, because if you get it part way up, you know, you could potentially, when the hinge line opens up, it could restrict that movement. So if it's right down into the V and matches the V of the hinge line, you know, it doesn't ever really restrict the movement. So basically get that all the way down in there, kind of hold it open. And then I just use my trim tool just to kind of start setting it in place. And I really just go along the, along that part and I just keep and it doesn't matter if it wrinkles a little bit, it's not that critical. So really, that's it. There's your hinge gap seal. And because my base color is white, you know, on most of that inner hinge line is white, um, you don't even see it. If your base color is not white and it's some other color, right, you can use clear. Uh, ultra coat to do that hinge gap or you can use whatever the base color is um, and as you see it's it's nice and free it doesn't you know make a funny sound when it opens or closes you know and that'll just enhance the performance of your of your ailerons so that's it that's that's how you hinge gap or seal the hinge gap I should say so there's both our wing panels done um, gap sealed ready to go as you can see you know lining up our templates at the beginning you know, we ended up with a pretty accurate, pretty accurate job from, you know, keeping everything nicely lined up from one side to the other. So, 
basically that is and I'm going to cover the top now same technique as the bottom uh, no different okay just working on the top of the wing so I just I'm not going to go through all the steps but the top I do a little different I start with the yellow first um, just because you can see the white through the yellow a little bit so on the top just more visually perfect um, I do the yellow first uh, and then I'll do the white next okay so I start with the yellow I put the white down I made sure I had the right overlaps and then I put this blue down um, just because it's it's fairly simple right it just overlaps both the yellow and the white so next I'm not going to do this blue I'm going to do this red and just because of the way it overlaps up here the blue is a sort of the final piece that has to slide in between um, for the points where all the points connect so I'm going to put the red on here first and then this blue and then finally the leading edge red I'll finish up uh, the last thing and do the do the tip okay so then I you know now I got my red on put that one on next and then I finish it up with the blue and it's really just because of the overlap up at this sharp point up there so really all that's left to do is do the red on the front so I get the marks on there I'll finish that up and then I'm going to split out the aileron so we finish off the red, uh, trimmed up the aileron, so there's the, the panel, all done. Uh, 311 grams or 12 grams, so they add about, it's about 40 grams of covering per side. Maybe even a, maybe even a little bit more. So, you know, basically 80, 90 grams of covering, so there's the other wing. It's also done, same fashion. Um, so covering, yeah, it's not terribly light. Um, so that pretty much wraps up all the covering uh, and how to how to put it on or how I at least I put it on um, and cutting it out and prepping and all that all that work so so I'm working on the bottom covering for the bottom tea can so this is the lower one so I sit on the bottom this is the top surface um, just a just a little point here on the that's how I did the filler uh, over top of the over top of the fiberglass, you know, nice and smooth. That filler works really, really good, and also over the over the support there. Um, but I want to show you the decal. So um, rather than using vinyl, I used Ultra Coat. Um, so this is the cutting mat that comes with uh, most of the cutters. Have it. They're sticky. They got a little uh, sort of self-healing sticky sticky mat here. So what I've done is I've actually stuck silver ultra coat I have the backing I've left the white backing paper on it you could probably take that off if you wanted to I find it seems to work okay with it on um, and I've cut out actually my these are my FAI numbers you can maybe maybe kind of see them in there I've cut those out so I'm going to show you just real quick here how to do a decal out of ultra coat so once you have that cut out you have to weed it just like you would any other uh, vinyl decal. <coughs> so it is a bit tricky, um, but weed out the inside pieces here first, depending on your particular font. So then you really want to peel back just the just the covering, not the backing paper. The backing paper stays stuck, and very very carefully because these do. The covering definitely, you know, the edges are, I'm still cutting with the same settings that I cut with all the other covering. So, you know, there's spots where it's maybe not cut exactly all the way through. So there's, there's our leftover. So, it's fine if a letter moves out of place, you can, you can sort of fit figure out where it goes and just sort of position it back in place. So to move this onto the model now, um, I'm just going to take some transfer tape and if you've cut vinyl before you probably have some transfer tape and I'm just going to cut a narrow strip of it. And masking tape works too or low, you know, any kind of low tack um, tape will work fine. So we're just going to place that on top, down, and then we should just be able to peel off the letters and then wherever you want to stick them. In this case I'm going to run them kind of down along the 
on the bottom here. You just sort of lightly tack it and then just really take your iron and just kind of iron right on top of the tape. It does not take long. You know, just, just a real quick kind of tack down and then really we're just going to peel our tape back. You know, and if a piece doesn't quite stick, just a quick tack on it. And then we're just going to run the iron over it. I'm just going to press it down with our paper towel or cloth, whatever you got. <clears throat> so there you go. Got a nice Ultra Coat, Ultra Coat decal. You know, these stick real well to the covering. They're not coming off um, and they're quite light, right? They're just as light as the covering. So, so there you go. That's how I've done a number of the logos on, uh, on this model with the cutter and some covering. This is the final shot to the model after it's all covered. Um, basically the same process kind of on every single part. Uh, I didn't really do anything that's really unique or different on each one of them. Um, everything used the cutter for getting all the pieces and then also the cutter to do uh, the logos like you can see on the wing. I did the rudder before I painted and that's really just because I do have a drawing of the fuse and how I'm going to paint it. So I've used that um, to do the covering on the rudder and then that way I have something to target um, from the fuse. So I can set it on here and you know tape my lines to the rudder and then I've made sure that everything matches up neatly. So it actually gives me a little more precise um, paint job just coming onto the tail. So. And then if I do want to fly it with a white fuse, because uh, I'm lazy, I certainly can just hinge it up and, and go. So that basically completes all the work uh, to covering and finishing the wood parts. Um, so I'll move on to painting and doing the servo setup.